Welcome everyone. Today we'd like to talk to you about using Waterly Mapping with the Value Flywheel for Combined Business and Technology Evolution. We believe, despite all the change that's happened, there's still a wave of transformation on the way for many organizations. We believe that a service-first approach will help you and your company ride this wave and succeed. Specifically, we're going to introduce something we call the Flywheel Effect. First, let's do some introductions. My name is David Anderson. I'm an engineer with extensive enterprise, cloud, and leadership experience. My name is Mark McCann. I'm also an engineer and cloud architect, and I'm passionately pursuing serverless first and engineering excellence. We are both part of the Wardley Mapping community, the serverless community, and we also have a big focus on product. We've been building a body of content around the serverless age over the past year. We have a book coming out with IT Revolution Press next year, along with the third contributor, Michael O'Reilly. Between the three of us, we have extensive experience in building systems and driving change. We believe serverless first represents an evolution into a new way of working that most companies will start using the cloud technology to reduce their time to value and really drive business results. As we said, the flywheel effect is the mechanism we are going to describe. It's a phrase from the Jim Collins book, Good to Great, but it is a very accurate description of what we are observing. But before we get into that, let's explain what a flywheel is, because <laughs> there's maybe one or two of you that need a refresher on uh, 19th century engineering, and I did. Uh, when power is inconsistent, a flywheel is used to absorb the energy and evenly distribute it in order to drive smoothly. We believe that both business and technology drivers should merge together, but something is required for that smooth progress to happen, and that's where a flywheel comes in. The last thing you want is business and technology energy cancelling each other out. And we've seen that many times in, in, our, in our experience. Yeah, definitely. The thing is, we, we want to help your organisation get this flywheel turning. You have to build up momentum going the right direction. It's really about improving your time to value, ultimately delivering sustainable results. But maybe let's talk about the flip side, right? Well, what we have seen a lot over our careers is things like, you know, dev versus op silos, tech versus product silos, unclear purpose, poor technical decisions, and short-term thinking. This all builds business, technical, and organizational depth. It clogs up your flywheel. So I don't know if you think this sounds complicated, but we, we've seen this a lot, you know? And so how do you build a long-term success? We, Mark and I have seen this in a, a whole bunch of companies we've, we've been um, speaking to and working with over the years. You've got Liberty Mutual, Coca-Cola, Taco Bell, Workout Software, iRobot, BBC, Ericsson, Fender, Cloud Guru, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, and loads of startups have figured this out. Has your company figured this out? Because the thing I believe is that a lot of companies don't really know this flywheel exists and are caught in the build trap and don't know their time to value. And by the way, Escaping the Build Trap is a brilliant book by Melissa Perry. Thoroughly recommend it. So we believe, and um, the, 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 the value flywheel here, we believe that creating and visualizing this value flywheel is critical in today's business landscape. We also believe that worldly mapping is one of the best techniques to help you navigate through this change. And we're going to talk you through this model and, and highlight it with an example later. But before that, it's important to point out, this is neither hybrid strategy or operational efficiency. This is about having a real bias for action aligned with the pragmatic proven ways of working that we have seen. This wheel is designed to spin many times, so don't feel that you need to do everything in phase two before moving on to phase three. Momentum and that bias for action is more important than anything else. Getting moving is really critical. So phase one, it's all about purpose. It sounds easy, but do you know what you're trying to do? As a team, as a department, as an organization, do you really know what is valuable for your team, for your org, for, for, your, for your business? Phase two covers challenge. You know, have you created that right environment for success? You know, is, the right, is the right environment there to discuss what you need to get to and to challenge the thinking until it's good enough for you to succeed? Phase three is about that next, next best action. You, know, you don't gold plate or build things you don't need to. With real focus, you can get results quicker than you could ever imagine. And phase four is about building for long-term value. There will be plenty of opportunities in the future, but you don't want to close them off because of some decisions you've made today that slow you down later so in the past i mean this thinking 
Mark, Michael, and I have been talking about this for a very for many, many years. And I'd always thought of this as building blocks. But I think when you sit and show someone all these building blocks built, it just seems overwhelming. And it doesn't really convey the movement and that rapid iteration as you create each of these blocks and build on it. And it does show that bias for action, for credit for success. So, you know, I, 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 I'm kind of moving away from the idea that these are building blocks. I think the idea that this is a flywheel that you need to keep turning is a nicer analogy. And we certainly found that this works for this type of thinking. Yeah, building blocks are very static. A flywheel you know, and conveys movement, and that's critical because you know, that bias for action, as we mentioned, is, is critical. So let's kind of walk through each of these these, these four phases. Um, the first is purpose. Um, rather than me rant on, Mark, why do you think purpose is important? Yeah, so so purpose, you know, and we've seen this time and again, it's really critical for that alignment um, on vision and strategy. So the teams actually know that the work that they're working on actually makes a difference. It's actually aligned with the goals and KPIs and results of your business. Um, we've seen too many times where teams have hadn't had this clarity of purpose and they can't really articulate you know, that the thing that they're working on, you know, how it makes a difference to their overall business. So it's really critical that they have that clarity of purpose. Um, one of the other you know, big things that we've mentioned here around the purpose is about obsessing over your time to value. It really is critical that teams have the observability of that, you know, how long it takes for a change to, make a, to, to get to a real user and making that really clear and making that feedback look very actionable so that your teams can focus on minimizing and reducing that time to value overall. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is,